In the last chapter, we looked at different mobile learning activities that you could use inside and outside the classroom. In this chapter, we will look at different tips and tricks that we can use in a variety of different settings. We have created the videos in a particular context, but these could easily be transferred into your context. So in our first video, we will look at QR codes. What is a QR code and how can we create and use them? In the second video, we will look at the Moodle feedback activity and we're going to look at this in the context of gaining feedback from event attendees. In the third video, we will look at how we can use blogging to foster more reflective practice in HE students. And in the last video, we will look at flipping the classroom in a school setting. We will look at what flipping the classroom means and different ways we can implement it. One way of enabling mobile devices to work with your Moodle course is instead of adding plain links into your site, to use a thing called QR codes. QR stands for quick response, so they are quick response codes. They're a type of two-dimensional barcode that can be read using smartphones. They can link directly to text, emails, websites, phone numbers and more. So we're going to learn how to create a QR code and how to put that QR code into our Moodle site. We need to use a QR code generator to create our QR codes. So I'm going to Google QR code generator and I'm going to use this one here. We need to choose what type of service we want the QR code to link to and I'm going to choose URL because I want it to link to a website. So I'm going to type my blog address in and we'll create a QR code that will link to the blog. So I click on generate. So here's the QR code. Now there are a couple of things I can do here. We can right click and save the image as and we'll save it to our computer. Or I could use this embed code. By using the embed code, the image is hosted on the external site rather than hosted in our Moodle installation. Okay, I'm back in my course and I'm going to add the image into a block at the side of the page. So with my editing on, where it says add a block, we choose HTML block. So here is the new HTML block. And to edit it, we choose this icon here. When hovering over this icon, it should display the text configuration. So we can give the block a title if we want to. When we do add one, the title would appear in a bar across the top of the block. If it's blank, then there would be nothing along the top. As we're only going to put the QR code image into the block, I'm going to add a title to increase the explanation. In this area, we place the content of the HTML block, and I'm going to upload the image we created earlier. We choose this icon, which looks like a tree, and this is to insert an image. So we go to find or upload an image, and then we upload a file, browse to your image, and click on upload a file. Click into the image description to put what's called alt tags on the image. Alt tags are very useful for anyone with visual impairments, as they can use screen readers to access the tags, and they will know that this is a QR code. So my alt is just QR code to link to Graham Boxwell's blog. Now the rest of the settings in the block is related to where the block appears in the course. So where it says on this page, I'm going to change it so it's on the right hand side. The weighting determines where it appears in relation to the rest of the blocks. I'm going to make it minus 10 so it appears at the top of the page. Now we may need to change the image size if we have scroll bars appearing. The block needs to fit in the size of your sidebar. We should change the image size as discussed in chapter 2 when we spoke about image optimization. So when changing the size of the QR codes, the proportions need to be kept the same or the QR code will not work. So if we reduce the height by 50%, we need to reduce the width by the same percentage. So we can see the QR code appearing here. Now I've added a free app called QuickMark to my iPhone. And when launching this app, I scan the QR code and my phone now displays my blog. And there are many other apps similar to QuickMark that you can use to scan QR codes. And we could also use this in reverse and have the QR displayed in different posters and literature and the scanning of the code would result in accessing the Moodle course. So we have seen how to create a QR code that will link through to external sites or that we could use outside Moodle to link back into the course. QR codes can be used for many other purposes too. 
We've seen how we can place the QR code in our Moodle site in an HTML block in the sidebar. And it's important not to change the proportions of the image when resizing, as the data held inside would no longer be valid. In the next video, we're going to see how to create a Moodle feedback activity so event attendees can give feedback through Moodle on their mobile devices.